hit, but it's getting hit like bang, 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 bang. Uh, it definitely sounds impressive. Let's see. I have a smirk on my face, and in my <laughs> head, I'm like, I think I know what's going on. So I kind of like jollily, jolly, jollily, jollily. I do not know how that would work. Jollily, yeah, I get you. In a jolly uh, way. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I start not necessarily walking faster, but slowly pick up my pace okay. and uh, try to make my way toward the thunderous noise. Okay, so as you head uh, up to the training area, you quickly come upon uh, Ymir's massive form uh, just beating the fucking hell out of one of those posts, just absolutely smashing that thing. Um, and with every rocking uh, arc of the post, you can see that in gra indeed the ground is rising up several inches and being dispersed as though a mini earthquake is happening. Um, there's also tremendous amounts of dust um, and uh, debris kind of flying around from the impact waves picking up, uh, you know, different debris on their own, almost like little mini gusts of wind throwing sand and dirt all over the place. Um, as he does this, you see his massive uh, 12 foot form just laying out huge haymaker like strikes with absolute ease and precision. Um, his uh, savage attack style, though, right away makes you realize that there is a lot he'd be able to learn from you. Um, you notice that as far as just this striking kind of style uh, that he's demonstrating, um, there's a lot of holes uh, in his martial art that would allow, um, you know, a savvy opponent to exploit them um, and and play on the less disciplined and strategic uh, kind of motions that he's making um, in order to maybe not tire him out, but wear him down. Um, and it just, right away, you realize there, there may be a benefit in you guys maybe training together a bit. Um, you haven't really seen him in close doing any kind of grappling, which you feel is probably going to be where his strength is. You would imagine that Ymir would be able to literally wrestle large mega damage creatures and, and be able to hold his own. Oh, I didn't say spear. My bad. I, I thought I put that in my, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. You, you, what's that? I was just, I, I thought I had said, uh, I guess I missed it in my head. I was thinking it that Ymir rushed it, like speared the damn uh, mega damage uh, dummy or oh, training yeah. he, post. You've already been you've already been working out for a while though, so I figured oh, I that see. was like okay. the first yep. maneuver yep. in. So, yep. um, my apologies. Oh no worries. Yeah, I would have seen that. Um, so. Okay, so now you guys are basically in the same place. Um, Ymir, you haven't noticed Akama arriving yet. And Akama, you get over to within about 30 feet of where Ymir is striking the post he's at. Um, you look over and you see that large individual. Um, the unit. The unit uh, standing <laughs> over at another post. And he's actually kind of kicking the dirt uh, like a disappointed child. Um, and you would guess that he might actually be a little jealous uh, at Ymir's performance uh, at the training yard relative to his own. And uh, he's just kind of standing there sort of looking up and watching Ymir from a distance every, every few moments. And... Uh, then looking back down at the ground and kind of kicking at his at his feet and kicking at the dirt um, without even throwing strikes, uh, even though he's he's still right next to one of the posts. Um, there are about ten individuals that obviously were just training previously that are all gathered around and just kind of sitting way far back, about fifty feet back. 
um, but they're they're watching Ymir train uh, and are all obviously very impressed. Um, several of them look like just normal pilgrims, um, but you notice that this individual uh, has returned as well. Uh, and he is now actually sitting um, kind of uh, like Native American style uh, in a very contemplative, uh, calm kind of posture where you can tell that he's really observing closely uh, the movements and motions of your companion as he trains. Um, he sits with uh, the book that you see in the image in his hands opened and he seems to be making um, small notes every every 10 to 15 seconds or so. Um, you can't I'll go ahead and, tell if oh, he's drawing ahead. or if he's actually writing something. Um, and yeah, what would you like to do? I'm going to walk uh, up to this gentleman, sit right next to him. I will take off my shirt and place it over the top of the drink, uh, that the, the gallon drink. So nice. I just say any dust or debris won't get into the drink itself. Okay. You go ahead and do And that. then I will slowly take a sip and look over to the gentleman with the book and ask, you know, uh, how you, how do you do? And I appreciate what you had, uh, instilled with me with during my training, uh, what brings you here? Uh, and he uh, looks up and smiles very, uh, very hospitably at you. And um, his smile, actually, he has some kind of quality where you almost feel like this is somebody you know or have met before um, that's made a good impression on you. Can't quite place his features, though. And there's something about looking at him from this distance that in a strange way, you can't quite get a firm read on his features. Like he's, you can see his face and all of the detail just fine. But as you're looking at him, it's almost like there's a slight change in his features every time he turns his head uh, to a different angle or at a, a different level. Um, what you thought you remembered of his face a moment ago is wrong and he's it's everything looks just a little different longer nose higher cheekbones fuller lips uh, uh sh more shallow uh uh eye sockets you know all of that kind of stuff keeps shifting just gradually um and it gives you just the the most kind of odd sensation about this individual very off-putting even though the effect itself seems warm and inviting um as he's looking at you, he kind of frowns slightly as though he knows exactly what it is you're experiencing as you're looking at him. Um, and he looks back down to his book uh, and he simply, uh, he simply mutters, um, uh, I apologize for the effect. Um, he says, it won't last long. I look at him odd, oddly, and uh, I quickly ask, what do you mean? Uh, and without looking up again, so now from this angle, as you're looking at the kind of the side of his face, as he looks down into his book and continues to seem to write, um, now the effect of his face kind of changing his features changing seems diminished quite a bit um but it's because he's almost completely in profile so you're really not getting a good look at his face at all but whatever that kind of shifting was um that was it, it did have an almost like it would give you a kind of like um car sickness or seasickness kind of you know nausea just slightly just slightly um, that has diminished now and you're not really feeling any of that. You're not really getting a good look at him and it's not really causing you any discomfort anymore. Um, and so, um, he says to you, um, he says, uh, it's a long story why mortals, 
uh, have such trouble with my appearance uh, and a tale for another day. Um, he says, I find your companion's fa fighting style fascinating. Um, and he kind of nods towards Ymir as he continues uh, working on the pole. Um, and each, each kind of loud detonation of metal uh, being strained is definitely giving out a, a loud enough noise that it's not uncomfortable for you, but it's like you guys are speaking in between the the strikes because they're way too loud to hear above. Um, he uh, like a great bell tolling. Yeah, only only in really rapid staccato. Um, now, as as he says this, he kind of nods towards Ymir, and uh, and he says, "Have you ever seen this style before, Noble Atlantean?" This is the first time I've witnessed this. Uh, he says, uh, "May I ask what your impressions are?" Fascinating, as you said. And he says to you kind of in a in a provocative way, kind of and kind of looking for more depth to your analysis. It seems that there might be a few things he can learn, but as far as I uh, I've been with him, uh, he's been uh, very he has a lot of strong aspects about his fighting style. Okay, and he says to you, um, and what do you see at first glance that he may wish to learn more about? More of his stand-up could use a little bit of work, but I'm sure when he takes his uh, opponent to the ground, it'd be a different story. He nods and he says, I agree, he says, I think I think his true strength would be in the clinch and ground game as well. Um, and then he makes a couple of quick, like kind of harder marks in the uh, book that he's writing in and then slaps it closed very quickly. And you see that the, um, the pen that he's been use, using has gold filigree all over a kind of uh, glossy redwood base. And um, as he snaps the book closed, he makes just a quick kind of rolling gesture with the pen in his other hand. And it, uh, it just seems to evaporate into some golden kind of smoke and dust. Um, this seems very commonplace though, because he doesn't even, he does it just as an unconscious gesture. Um, and then quickly starts tucking his book away into a large kind of messenger's type satchel that he has strung around his waist. Um, and as he secures it in and latches it, um, he looks over at you while he puts his uh, elbows onto his knees and kind of uh, sits, you know, in a more comfortable position now. Um, from a pouch on his side, he pulls out a long curved redwood pipe um, and seems to produce out of the same pouch a small pinch of what, what looks to be a kind of silvery-looking uh, plant matter, perhaps some kind of tobacco variant, and uh, just kind of roughly and crudely stuffs it in. Um, as it crinkles and crushes into the bowl, um, you hear uh, small, almost like bell-like noises um, coming directly from... Uh, the plant material itself as it snaps and breaks uh, being shoved into the bowl. At this, uh, he uh, holds it to his lips and just takes a couple of quick pulls without producing any flame at all. Um, and you see that uh, the, the silver material ignites into um, a nice hot cherry and some embers. Um, and he begins taking long, uh, kind of exaggerated pulls from his pipe. 
um, exhaling through his nose and letting out a large kind of layer of uh, misty smoke very quickly about himself. Um, the, the scent of whatever this uh, tobacco-like product is is incredibly intoxicating. It smells uh, to you almost like a, a wonderful combination of orange marmalade and some kind of ham some kind of really delicious, salty, kind of cured pork product. Um, but it's it's just amazing, and you've just eaten your fill. Um, so it's it's strange that it has such an effect on your, your uh, kind of palate. Um, but yeah, it smells absolutely amazing. Um, and after he takes a few pulls, um, he takes it out of his mouth and hands it over, uh, kind of offering it over to you with one eyebrow up in the air. Just, just... Just offering, uh, not not trying to insist or, or anything like that. So, so what I would like to do is uh, I would peer over him and I would touch the uh, right above my navel with my tattoo and I will summon the three eyes and I'll basically after i cast it i will go ahead and reach over to grab the pipe and look at him and say so if you don't mind me asking what is your name okay you uh you go ahead and cast your three eyes go ahead and uh tell it to do that so that it'll take your points and Um, as you do activate the magic and open up your supernatural vision, um, you open your eyes to him and you now see, uh, a perfect black outline of his entire form. Everything literally looks like it has a sensor mark put over it. You can see none of his clothing, um, no items or anything that he's holding, except for the pipe, which he's extending out and offering to you. Um, the misty smoke can be seen, um, all of that, but literally, it's like something is perfectly carving him from your awareness, even in this enhanced state. Okay? Okay. Um, as you voluntarily kind of fluctuate the spell's effects down and kind of check your normal vision, just instinctively, um, you, you can see him just fine. You, your, your regular vision is picking him up just fine. Enhanced vision, it, it doesn't make sense to you that somehow supernaturally he's completely shielded i'll put it that way okay um and this is something that you have rarely seen in your experience usually this is an indication that something is extremely powerful at play purposely obscuring a being from the perception of others and when i say powerful i mean demigod or above level power um definitely not just a simple spell um that's what your tattoo is actually designed to cut through um most mundane magical effects and properties of of you know regular magic items wouldn't come close to being able to do this so anyway, just trying to give you a scale of what you're dealing with. Um, okay, and as you... I'm sorry, you wanted to say what to him? And your name, sir? Um, he looks at you and he says, uh, that must be earned. Uh, he says, would you truly know if there is a cost? Now, you're not picking up any kind of malice as he says this. He doesn't mm -hmm, seem... Mm -hmm pissed off I feel that um 
what kind of uh what kind of situation do i need to be in in order to obtain this information um he says uh a wager perhaps he says first to land a blow He says, and for this information, for my real name, I would give you a boon in return. Uh, He says, um, I have noticed your group since your arrival, and I would be, I would be honored to play a role in the future, um, of your travels across this world. Um, He says, I see great potential in all of you uh, and would be counted among uh, friends if if it could be arranged. He says, um, I could see great value uh, in having the ear and favor of one such as yourselves. For you will go far and do great things in the years to come. As I hear this, I uh, take a puff out of his pipe. Okay. Um, And I uh, start nodding, like uh, just listening very uh, intricately. Okay, so as you take a puff out of the pipe and start listening, um, you right away start seeing small spaces open up all around you in reality and as these tiny little uh not fractures as much as tears kind of like a great piece of skin wrapped across your reality is slowly being gnawed through and on the other side coming through you just see these strange little silvery teeth gnawing holes in the skin between realities Um, and as the holes appear just one every you know several feet in your field of vision um, as soon as a hole appears being chewed by these silvery teeth once it's open you see the teeth recede and just bright shining red eyes in a great darkness uh, lie beyond the holes that have been chewed Um, and you get a great sense of malice from whatever is on the other side eating its way through. Now, this is only happening in small areas, you know, here and there, Um, so you don't feel like anything's just about to pour through, and all of the holes seem to be equidescent parts, uh, uh, distances from you. So you would say that everything is like 100 feet away, so it's far enough that you don't really feel a sense of danger like something's just about to be on top of you and you're you're kind of puzzled by this go ahead and roll a perception check in your profile if you would sir uh do i know how many eyes are i guess looking at me so to far so to say as you're looking around you would guess you could identify you kind of pivot your head really quick um and you're close to a kind of a wall, a building behind you, so the effect doesn't really seem to be there. Um, Okay, so you guess that you're not so much seeing this as it is your mind's way of interpreting a perception that the drug is giving you in the same way that if you were in a coma and your lungs were slowly filling up with fluid because you were sick you would be in a fever dream about like drowning right you would guess that this is your mind's way of interpreting something you can't really understand into something that's more familiar. And 
as you're looking, you realize that because all of these instances are happening about a hundred feet away um, from your point of reference, that these things aren't really here, but it's like it's trying to tell you that you're now in the middle ground and that although whatever this thing is isn't right on top of you and almost through, it's getting closer. It's not a distant threat anymore. There's something approaching. Um, and you definitely get the sense that this thing is aware of you. It didn't need you to smoke whatever this substance was to know about you. It already knew you were here and is looking forward to getting much, much closer to all of you um, in a very malevolent and diabolical way. Um, so as you're seeing all of this, um, you, you would guess that he kind of notices this, uh, and he says, um, now you see why I do not wish to be seen, uh, by those that I do not choose. Yes. And he's obviously referencing these things. Is this your doing? Or is this something that is just around? He shakes his head and he says, um, he says, none of the threats um, immediate to this area are of my doing. Um, he says, I only show you one of the things I see. And you see this without the use of this. And I basically sh give him back his uh, pipe. He nods and he says, he says, tis my curse as the scribe. Now this whole time he keeps his face pointing downward. Okay. And I uh, nod in acknowledgement. Okay. He takes uh, the pipe back and begins taking long pulls from it, obviously really enjoying it. Um, you yourself get a really pleasant kind of buzz going from it. Um, it's not unlike, you know, something like cannabis, uh, maybe some mushrooms, you know, something Just like, like that. Just like LSD tobacco, you know, nothing it's, big. I mean, it's, you know, it ain't, it ain't sherm <laughs> and it ain't dust, but it's... It's up there. It's got, you know, it's like a cap bowl. So, um, but you definitely, you get a nice buzz from it. And it, uh, it reminds you kind of a mixture between like cannabis, tobacco, and maybe some, some psychedelic mushrooms. Um, so not, not wholly unpleasant at all. Uh, mm -hmm. you feel it kind of wash over you and you kind of relax just a little bit, puts you in a little bit more mellow zone. Um, but he continues uh, looking down and he appears to uh, just be waiting to see what, what your response will be or what you want to, you know, how you want to engage him. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh... Uh, I will reach out and uh, kind of like pat him on the back a little bit and say, I do appreciate uh, the uh, vision you have given me. It gives me more of a broader understanding of this area. Okay. Um, you go ahead and do that. And as you pat him on the shoulder, you, as soon as you make contact to where he should be, your hand just goes right through him. And you realize that he's... You, somehow he's not actually there um as you do this he doesn't seem like offended or anything but he kind of you hear a, a very low almost chuckle kind of roll out from from where he's sitting um and he says uh my apologies i must be very cautious um he says uh i will assure you uh that if you choose uh, to engage in this contest with me, um, I will scale my avatar um, uh, to an appropriate level. Um, he says, 
uh, it will not be an unwinnable match by any means. So what if I lose? Uh, he, the, the being shakes its head slightly and says, there will be no cost. Uh, he says, simply no reward. So the only reward is me winning, and that's the answer to my question, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So as of right now, since I, uh, and since he had, you he are... And said just first blow. It's not, it's literally just yeah, 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 yeah. first person to land a hit, so... Um, so since I don't quite know who you are, is there something I can call you by? Uh, he, he simply says the scribe is, is acceptable. Okay. And Ymir's and, uh... just still beat the living Moses out of this thriller. <laughs> It's just, and we're it's talking in the, the middle of each stud. Right, the mega damage leather is starting to just rip and tear, um, and your knuckles are starting to, you know, uh, starting to not swell, but you're starting to actually feel it now. And, um, you know, you're definitely getting a really, really good workout going. You're beating the Christ out of this thing. Uh... Okay, a comma. What would you like to? What That's would you like to right. say? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're getting further and further from being unbalanced. By the way, your start. This is definitely helping you quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, a comma. What would you like to say or do? When do you want to have this uh, sparring session? Uh, he basically springs up to his feet, very lively, like a cat. Um, and just kind of uh, simply starts walking over, uh, like far away from Ymir, um, on the other end of the kind of sand pit. Um, I say sand pit, but I I really just mean like, you know, just a just a patch of sand. It's not like a pit. So um, anyway, he starts. I mean- you know yeah, what I'm ahead. you know what I'm saying. Just something where you're not going to injure yourself taking a fall. An but... area with sand in it. Yeah, it's not. But I mean, it's not like a you know some kind of huge depression in the ground. I just want to make that. Oh clear. no no. Typically, where since the military mindset that I have, sand pit just means like an area that has a bunch of sand in it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so you guys, or, so he walks over to the other end of that relative to Ymir. And now, Ymir, you actually notice um, his figure uh, in your peripheral um, heading over. He's heading to the opposite side um, that the large individual, the unit, was still standing at. And um, so you're kind of in the center of uh, the sand pit and uh, the unit is over on the left-hand side and uh, uh, the scribe just walked over to the right hand side and this thing's probably, we'll say the, the pit itself is like a hundred feet across. So there's lots of space in between. Um, but, uh, Ymir, you notice that and a comma, um, you see him stand up and start walking over there. All right. I will get up, grab my two drinks and start making my way toward Ymir. Okay. Notice uh, Dina Kama, Ymir, out of the like corner of his eye, after a series of strikes, sort of finally backs off the dummy. The ringing finally stops for a brief second, and he sort of smiles, and <sighs> he's, you know, clearly... Um, I, I wouldn't say winded, but he's clearly sweating, like you said. He's he's been working out for a while now and so he's expelling his energy but he's very happy to see a comma especially with a drink always with a drink <laughs> Make, makes him smirk a little bit even through his um labored breathing when he sees a comma and nods his head at him so i woke up uh walk up to ymir and hand him uh the big tall glass or mug 
uh, I take my shirt and rip, like, th basically throw it over my shoulder. Okay. And uh, as I hand it, hand the drink to Ymir. Okay. Take it. All right, you Ymir. go ahead and do that. Yep, Ymir takes the uh, the mug of ale, raises it uh, up to a comma, and says, uh, in his classic, uh, he's really trying to work on his English. He's really trying. So it's still broken, it's still labored, but he's really trying. And he goes, food was good, yes? <laughs> I have a uh, big smirk on my face and I nod to him and I say, very well met. He nods his head graciously and goes, we have room? quite like uh, inquisitively because he wasn't sure about accommodations and whether he had to make them or not he was just kind of in his own world and so he's checking in on the benefit of the party yeah so I uh, nod to him and I said we do have a room I scoped it out it is actually uh, not bad it's pretty big and then I go ahead and raise my mug and kind of like clank it like tap it mm -hmm. on his and i say right. to to you my friend and then i go and just knock it back down the whole thing he return or ymir returns the gesture clanging it very proudly and downs the entire gallon mug and sets it down and sort of <laughs> is very gracious after he downs it because of the the gesture and what it means in his society for a fellow warrior especially one that he's fought beside to do something like that even minor things like that are the ripple effect on it is huge for most vana and so ymir is very pleased and goes looks over at the the metal dummy that he just spent the the better part of however long he's been there whipping the shit out of and he looks over at a comma and smiles and goes we train soon yes Ymir would love to spar I uh, nod my head and I said yes I have a few techniques I could show you and then uh, we can uh, practice it together in a sparring match uh, but bear with me I have uh, some some uh Something I have to do real quick. And then I give him a, a slight bow and I take my walk toward the scribe. Ymir just sort of nods his head and uh, grunts like, go do what you have to do. And uh, he uh, takes a few steps away to cool down for just a second because he has other plans in mind with the crowd that's gathered and the unit still obviously itching for something he's done enough of the spiritual cleansing now he wants to have some fun and obviously judging by his energy when he walked in he clearly understands that uh, the unit is looking for a challenge of strength, a test of strength, and so he'd be more than happy to oblige. Okay. All right. Um, so am I to take it that, uh, comma, you do want to go ahead and do the contest with the scribe? We already... Uh... He already set it in motion, so I'm just uh, affirming what he wants to do. Okay. So I'm just uh, following suit. And Ymir is going to go ahead and kind of stand back for this? Yep. Uh, okay. Ymir right now is just kind of cooling down, enjoying his drink, but he's keeping a keen eye on Akama and watching Akama. Given their conversation, he's going to just really take a look at the the technique that his companion has used so effectively in combat here recently uh, for the first time. Really try to focus and understand what makes him so powerful. Okay. All right. Um... 
we are going to give me one second I'm just putting a token in place here okay so both of these are For some reason, I'm gonna need to go over. There we go. I'm gonna need to go over everybody, everybody's token, and make sure that they're dropping on the right layer first time. So that's set, and here we go. Okay. All right. Just moving you guys over here. So this is essentially a large kind of sandy pit. Uh, you guys are able to see okay, hopefully. Yep, I zoomed in and uh, should be good. And yep. you guys don't, uh, there's no darkness or anything you're just seeing everything nope. perfect okay. great light perfect yep all right so um a comma you are standing in front of the scribe and we are going to go ahead and set up initiative you guys square off with each other um each taking up your battle stance um, you're not activating any tattoos, correct? You're just, just uh, regular hand to hand. I don't want to. In my mind, I know I can't really hurt them, but I don't want to show too much power. Okay. I am rolling for initiative for him. Oh, whoa. Let's go ahead and clear this. Sorry, guys. Clear. There we go. God bless. Okay. Well, that. Well, that sucks. Okay. At twenty. Oh, I didn't even need to do that. I had already. I had already rolled the nine. Sorry about that. Uh, it doesn't. Still, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Make a difference, yeah. I mean, I didn't roll through the. I didn't roll, in the character sheet. I rolled on the map, so it doesn't look like it added my one. No, even yeah, though it doesn't matter. No pluses. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. I mean, it's it doesn't matter. It's still yeah. lower than nine. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So. Um. He has taken up a stance that you recognize as a martial arts style called uh, Crane Kung Fu. Oh. And you are not very familiar with it, but as he very uh, rapidly seems to kind of hover across the ground at you. I mean, he, it's not quite a blink motion because you do catch the motion um, but it's so fast that you really aren't even identifying his individual steps. Um, he kind of blurs towards you and with one outstretched, uh, kind of, uh, cocked arm, he, uh, rears back and comes in with like an angular strike from up above your, your left shoulder. Um, and as he does so, uh, you notice that his hand seems so rigid in the form that he's taken with it that it looks like it may, uh, I mean, it, it literally looks like a blade coming at you. So you really feel like this attack could do some, he, he, there's something about it that makes you feel like he, he could definitely do some damage. 
Um, let's take a look here. And thought I had a straight. Let me see. He's gonna have a simple. You question. Kam calmly rubs one of his ancestral horns, watching the duel. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need to get some polish and a rag, bro. You know you're going to need it. Question. With my three eyes still up, there's, uh, I still are unable to see his movements like that? Um, you're, with your three eye senses up, you're still seeing just basically a silhouette. You're, yeah, it's, it looks the exact same. It's just moving really fucking fast. Okay. Um... There's Let's... nothing that I can see from him that's coming off different. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Um, all, okay. uh, except for, obviously, the smoke is gone. He's put the pipe away. So, um, All right. So he rushes in with that crane-style attack uh, coming down kind of onto your left shoulder. Um, what would you like to try and do? You have the option to do an auto parry, um, or you could try and dodge. Um, again, the advantage of the auto parry is it doesn't use an attack, so after this exchange, you get to go. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me go ahead and do round. I should just start putting R&D. And we go plus one. Add. There we go. Okay, so you're doing an auto parry. Ooh. Attempts to parry. Beautiful! Now, did that give you... Your bonus plus six. Fucking outstanding. Oh. All right, man. So you easily brush aside his attack, and we're going to say it's such an impressive kind of sweeping uh, full-bodied gesture that you're able to throw uh, his attacking arm off uh, kind of keel just slightly. And you feel like this is going to give you just a, a slight bit of advantage uh, coming up to, to take your attack. Um, what would you like to do in response? He's now just a bit off balance and is kind of uh, floating to your left. Um, he's in front of you, but you, you've got a nice kind of opening on his right side as he's kind of off balance moving to the left. And his attack was it a, a, a leg coming down? No, or it was a, a, a it was arm. it was his right arm, basically in a crane kind of style, almost like a dagger hand, uh, extending out and down, trying to come down on your left shoulder. So, with the motion, him coming down on my left shoulder with his right arm, yeah. Uh huh. I will turn toward him so now my right shoulder is closer to his chest area mm -hmm. and I will come in with a inside elbow to the chest nice alright um, go ahead and roll strike uh, yes Nice. Very nice. All right. So as you start uh, pivoting your body in, uh, generating your kind of kinetic chain up from your back foot, pivoting your torso to get just lots of torque on this elbow coming in, um, mm -hmm. you see that he uh, 
actually is going to try and frame off of your incoming elbow with a parry and try and kind of use the momentum to further rotate himself out and around out of range. Um, so with the parry, he's trying to just basically continue moving the way he's going. Uh, let's see. We're going to do a simple... What's the attack that he has to fail on? Like, is it 1 to 11 type situation? Uh, no, he has to beat your attack. 18? No, you got a 21. 21. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 1d20, and he's got... Now, the parry is always where people have the biggest bonuses, pretty much. Right. And exploding and all that stuff. Okay. All right. So, as he leans into it, he tries to frame up properly with his left hand and even tries bringing his right arm in to create, like, to frame up with two hands but the force that you've generated is simply too great. And as he tries to post up, you just simply go right through his framing and connect with his chest full full bore. Um, the impact is great enough. Go ahead and roll. Mm, I'm gonna say 2d6 on this. It's gonna be mega damage. Regular 2d6? Uh, yeah, 2d6, unless you're trying to pull your punch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so if you want to pull your punch, there is... I'm looking for it. Okay. Uh... Oh, there it is. Hmm... Okay, so you successfully pull your punch. Uh, and um, so you can go ahead and just roll uh, 6d6, and that'll be SDC damage instead of mega damage. So I'll do 3d6 twice. Because I don't have a, a 6, I don't think. Jesus, man. Pull punches my dick. I'm fucking <laughs> destroying this guy. There we go. Okay, so... Um, all right, so as you connect with him at the last heartbeat, you kind of check your elbow and and really reduce the, the impact by about 90%. And so what you wind up striking him with is just enough to further kind of push him off course and actually uh, make him kind of miss a step as he lands on the ground again um, and kind of stagger as he's forced to catch his balance. Um, as he does, uh, he quickly writes himself and you're able to see on his uh, strange, slightly shifting features uh, the hint of a smile um, as he stands up once again fully erect. Um, once he's uh, completely up again, he bows deeply to you at the waist and says, well played, Atlantean. Well played. Um, I return the jester by bowing deeply to him as well. Okay. And I'll say, good duel. All right. At this, at this he nods again. Ymir is excited. At, oh. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Ymir is excited at um, his partners uh compatriots uh apparent victory and so he sets the glass down and 
beats both of, both of his hands on his chest and kind of lets out a, not not necessarily uh, as loud of a roar, but it's definitely a roar of excitement. He's fucking hyped because he just saw what happened. Okay. Okay, so you do this and you see um, you see the scribe's eyes kind of cast over to you and nod as well. Uh, in appreciation of your enthusiasm. Um, and you see that this is, you guys all realize this is a way that camaraderie is definitely built. The test of, of warriors amongst each other is there's a reason it's done uh, through every, every kind of tribe and civilization throughout time. Um, and it's definitely good to kind of see where each other stands on a more primal and basic level. Um, as he nods to you, uh, he looks up briefly to towards the sky and uh, as he does so, you guys look up as well and you see one of those airships seemingly almost directly overhead but several hundred feet up in the sky um and you would think it's a pretty commonplace occurrence but for some reason it's drawn his attention um he looks back down and he looks over at you akama uh he says um he says as i stated previously uh my name is Scribe Locriobo. Uh, he says, My true name, however, you have won in fair combat. Um, he says, uh, Produce the black card given to you previously. I uh, reach into my pouch and pull it out. Okay. You reach in, and as you pull it out, you now notice that the solid black card um, directly in the center on one side has a strange, just semi-circle gold glyph. Very plain, very, very basic. Uh, it is now etched uh, in perfect definition about a quarter of an inch large. Um, you don't see anything remarkable about this small glyph uh, whatsoever. In fact, you don't recognize it or uh, even seem to be able to place it in any kind of language that you've ever seen, uh, you know, evidence of before. Um, but whatever it is, it's obviously, it's obviously like he placed it there and it's supposed to represent his identity, his name. Um, you do know from your knowledge of magic that supernatural creatures in particular will almost never give you their full true name because having that is almost like having a direct connection to their essence that will allow a lot of different kinds of magic wielding entities it will allow them to basically circumvent that creature's defenses almost entirely and be able to put them in in uh, someone else's thrall meaning that w the walls that these creatures keep up to keep from being like bound and enslaved um, like a genie of the lamp those walls are almost completely negated if something has their true name to use as a focus. Um, so for these kinds of beings, it is really taboo to allow anything to have even part of your full name. You would yeah. guess this is definitely not even close to its entire name, but you feel very confident that it actually gave you part of its true name in, in this glyph. Um, other no, than, I don't know what it is. Other, yeah. other than that, you have no idea. And it's interesting to you that it was given, it's it's been placed on this card, which was another almost sign of uh, appreciation, like a token, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, 
and, and is is there anything you want to say or do? It's it's open if you guys want to interact in some way. Um, I look at the scribe and I uh, try to understand what happened as far as in the black card is concerned. Uh, I feel like I am still conf 